let's talk about some voice actors. Do you know something? As an aspiring voice actor with an amateur YouTube channel all about voice acting, I figured it would be wise to dedicate an episode of Mike Talks About on voice actors. And during this past season of fine weather, famous vocal talent of the entertainment spectrum celebrated voice actor day on Twitter. So in honor of these... late celebrations, I thought I'd like to share some memories I have of some truly talented voice actors and some of my favorite performances often attributed to them. I tell you what, it's better than pissing around with some ancient webcam of eons ago, am I right lads? Before I begin however, I think it's only right that I thank all of the voice actors working in the entertainment industry. Without you guys and gals, we wouldn't have as many outstanding performances as we do, and for that, I and many other people like me cannot thank you enough. Okay, now let's get into it. It's me, Mario! Ah, Charles Martinet. What more can be said about this absolute legend of voice acting? Born on September 17th, 1955 in San Jose, California, Charles Martinet is an acclaimed actor well known for his work in Nintendo's Super Mario game franchise as the voice of the title character, amongst other characters. He attended the University of California in Berkeley, initially to study international law, before discontinuing these studies after his tutor told him to regurgitate information he'd written in his book, chapter by chapter. A primary factor that contributed to his decision is the fact that he had a fear of public speaking. In fact, he pursued acting on a recommendation from his friend in order to combat this fear. And what did that decision lead to? Well, it led to an apprenticeship at the Berkeley Repertory Theatre, training and experience at the Drama Studio in London, becoming a member of the San Jose Repertory Theatre, and eventually the official beginning of his career in 1986, where he portrayed a rapping Dracula in a corporate video for ECAD Systems. Oh, and the TV film Brotherhood of Justice, where he portrayed a deputy. Beat it, all of you. Now, I first heard his voice through Super Mario Advance 2, the Game Boy Advance port of Super Nintendo classic Super Mario World. And one of that version's newest features was all new voice acting provided by Mr. Martinet himself. <laughs> At the time I first played this, and this was when I was quite young, I didn't know about this Charles Martinet person, as I was too enthralled by the funny voices these mustached plumbers were emitting. It wasn't until I started playing Super Smash Bros. Melee on Nintendo GameCube when I started getting into Mario's voice, especially when I was getting my ass handed to me by my brother on the odd occasion he plays either plumber brother. Eventually, the more I dived into the weird and wonderful world of Mario, I learned who he was and ended up loving his performance as Mario, along with other characters like his brother Luigi and arch rivals Wario and Waluigi. It's the way he voices Mario, giving him a soft, light-hearted, friendly, warm and inviting voice, combined with that zest of energy and oftentimes humorous deliveries of his lines that always delivers such a pleasing smile to my face over how much joy he exudes. There are some lines of dialogue in Super Mario Sunshine that I get a kick out of thanks to his amazing comical delivery, such as, hmm, look like a Mario's gonna have to find a job, and his exasperated, there's more? Huh, <sighs> it makes me wish Nintendo actually used that latter line. Anyway, it's not just his performance as Mario that amazes me. He manages to maintain the strengths he uses when voicing Mario on the other characters he voices in these games, despite their differing personalities. I genuinely feel bad for Luigi because of how Martinet sells his performance to me. He nails the shy and awkward nature of Luigi's character perfectly, especially in Luigi's Mansion, where the whole game has him completely scared out of his wits. You feel his fear as he hums the game's main theme to himself throughout the game, and as he slowly conquers his fears just to save Mario's sorry ass, it all culminates with relieved laughter at the end, echoing similar feelings that I feel for the poor dude. And other times, where Luigi is more confident in what he's doing, Martinet adds a little bit of his goofball attitude to his personality. And much like Mario, Martinet's vocals for Luigi make for an awesome time for me. Then there's his deliciously evil and oftentimes fantastic performance as Wario, and his eccentric and maddening vocals as Waluigi that help bring these characters to life and make them memorable for all the right reasons. And his performances as these two are so damn good, certain lines like, I'm a Wario, I'm a gonna win, and <laughs> Waluigi number one, are all the more memorable thanks to strong delivery and delicious flavour to the voices. This is despite how little dialogue the characters are given in the majority of the games, because Nintendo. 
And the best part? His voice work as these characters are so iconic and memorable, there are dozens of impressions, imitations, and parodies across the Tinterwebs thanks to how simple it is to do. In fact, I'm gonna do my own impressions right now. Wahoo! I'm a the wiener! I'm a Luigi, number one. Obey me, Wario! I am your master, Mario is your enemy. Waluigi, yeah, yeah, yeah! But Mike, I hear you ask, what about roles of his outside of Super Mario? Well, years later, I was watching walkthroughs of Jet Set Radio Future on the Tube of You, and when I got to the final boss, I was taken aback to find out in the credits that the game's antagonist, DJ Goji Rokaku, was indeed voiced by Charles Martinet. And that was my first experience of a non-Mario Martinet role. It felt weird. I'd been so used to hearing him exclusively for all these Nintendo games, and yet here he is, voicing a character for a game exclusively on the original Xbox. Nonetheless, all the similar techniques he uses to voice Wario are implemented here on Goji. Only since he actually is a villain, unlike the anti-heroic Wario, he actually is intimidating, commanding, and an all-round badass. And oftentimes strange due to the intentional glitches in his audio that represent a record or being scratched on a turntable, but a joy to listen to nonetheless. <laughs> All of you heed my words. Still, I couldn't shake off the feeling of he is Mario, always has been, always will be, because of how legendary his performances as the Mario characters are, despite some other good performances in other video games, like the Elder Brother and Vault Man in Kane and Lynch Dead Men. Okay. Okay, you fucking prick. But after this, you and I are done. Vigoro in Skies of Arcadia, and the Homunculus in Shadow of Destiny. Of course you have. But do you want to know something that shocked me? Let me take you back to early 2012. I'm playing Skyrim on my Xbox 360. I'm whooping ass, doing side quests, learning all the different dragon shouts, and I get to a story quest where I'm tasked to climb High Hrothgar, up the steps to reach the throat of the world. As I reach the top, a dragon flies in, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, time to whoop some dragon ass. Then he starts talking to me introducing itself as Parthenax, and I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean the attempt of killing you. But we have a nice conversation about some storyline lore, and he speaks with a casual, warm, and serious tone, but his voice is a deep and commanding baritone. Hmm. Do you have no better reason for acting than destiny? Are you nothing but a plaything of Des, a fate? I liked the performance so much, it helped me enjoy Parthenax as a character. Weeks later, my memories conjure up that exact moment, and as I look through the official wiki, I'm floored to find out that dragon was indeed voiced by Charles Martinet. A few questions popped into my head at this point. How is this possible? How can he produce a voice that fucking deep? How did he manage to pull this off so well? I'll tell you why. He's Charles Martinet and he's so damn good at his job. By the by, I've seen a fair amount of his appearances at many conventions before on YouTube, and just like the Mario characters, he is a massive goofball himself, what with his comedic interactions with other fans combined with his warm and inviting personality. It crushes me that I've never met him myself, and it would be amazing if it ever happened. Also, he recently narrated a six-episode documentary on Netflix called High Score, so why don't you go and check it out if you've got the time. Sinners need no mercy, or sympathy. I really gotta hand it to myself for going from one legend of voice acting to another. Crispin Freeman was born on February 9th, 1972 in Chicago, Illinois. There, he attended the Latin School of Chicago, which he graduated from in 1990. He would earn many academic achievements in this period of time. He got a bachelor's degree in theater and computer science from the Williams College, and a master's in acting from Columbia University. As a child, he was greatly influenced by various animes such as Star Blazers, Speed Racer, and Robotech. 
the latter of which he said in the January 1999 issue of America Interview, that show really blew me away. He was especially big into Battle of the Planets. After all, not only did he love the character Mark from the show, a name he would later adopt as a pseudonym for himself, but also his voice actor, the late Casey Kasem. He initially got into voice acting when a friend of his landed a role on the anime Peacock King. On a recommendation from his friend, he called up Central Park Media for a job. When they offered him a job at the studio, Freeman initially declined the offer at first, but he eventually relented after remembering his love of anime. His first big role at the studio was being the second voice for the character Zelgardis Greywords on cult anime series Slayers, after the contract of his previous voice actor, Daniel Cronin, expired. <laughs> That's not how you use guns. He would later go on to land many roles after this, including Toga Kiryu in Revolutionary Girl Utena, Jeremiah Gottwald in Code Geass Lelouch of the Rebellion, and more recently, Cray Forsyth in Promare. In a similar way to how I discovered Charles Martinet, it was when I was little when I first heard Crispin Freeman's voice through his portrayal of Turniphead, or Prince Justin, in Howl's Moving Castle, a role he partially obtained because he is a big fan of Hayao Miyazaki's films. I was too enthralled by the whimsical nature of the film to even notice. That, and his character only had dialogue during the film's closing moments. But in retrospect, despite the small screen time he gets, he does a solid job voicing him. Nah, where I really got into his voice acting was when I first witnessed a little anime show no one knows of called The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya in 2010, where he played the show's deutragonist, Kyom. Probably the biggest reason why I love Kion as a character is because of how Freeman manages to perfectly nail down the characteristics of who he's voicing. To wit, Kion is a character who serves as a contrast to Haruhi. If she's loud, boisterous, and has the tendency to be a real bitch at times, Kion is more sane, rational, and level-headed. So how does he voice him? By being as boring as possible. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me explain here. But Freeman decides to take that tone and sprinkle in oodles of charm into it. Namely, by injecting this voice with great amounts of sarcasm and adding in humorous deliveries with his dry wit. And it worked so damn well, it made me fall in love with Kion as a character. She truly is an idiot. About a month after I first watched Haruhi, I then watched another show he did a leading role in. Helsing, where he voiced Alucard in one of his first roles he did when he was based in LA. Despite said anime's English dub being a solid dub all around, it is clear as soon as you get your first glimpse of Alucard that the reason why you watch this in dub is because Freeman clearly has one of his defining moments of his entire career. He perfectly encapsulates Alucard's character down to a T, being domineering, badass, and oftentimes classy. And that deep baritone he gives him is just... Perfect. These traits allow him to practically own any scene his character's in. He makes you want to shut up and listen to every single word coming out of his mouth because his voice, his acting, is just that good! I get that a lot. But then what does that make you? A man. A dog. Or a monster. By this point, I had an epiphany. After watching Helsing, I became a huge Crispin Freeman fanboy. Throughout the 2010s, especially early on, I went through a major phase with him. I'd watch any video on YouTube of his many appearances at anime conventions. I'd watch any anime or play any video game he had a voice role in. I used his style of acting as a huge inspiration for when I was doing drama back in high school. Hell, I even cosplayed two of his characters, Kion, twice, and Shizuo when I went to Manchester Comic Con because I loved him that goddamn much. If I were to describe his voice, I would say it's like a smart, formal, and elegant white tailor suit, fine crafted to perfection, fitting perfectly like a velvet glove. And with the range of characters he voices, be they a smartass, loud and bombastic, or deliciously evil, his voice will bring these characters to life and will make you enjoy them in a memorable way. Oh, and I recommend you listen to his voice with headphones if you want to understand that analogy. During the making of this video, I did just that on his video where he talked about trees and how we needed to save them. Let's just say my ears felt like they just had the best therapy of their whole existence. But to wrap this whole section up, I made this meme back in August of 2011 for my own amusement that just about sums up how I feel about Crispin Freeman. 
one of the greatest legends of voice acting. No, that's cool. I was beginning to think you turned all cold bitch on us, honey. Born on May 28, 1981 in Biloxi, Mississippi, Laura Bailey initially got into acting after watching an interview with actress Katie Holmes on a special of TV show, Dawson's Creek. In order to achieve this goal, she attended the theatre program at the Collin County Community College in Plano, Texas, where she participated in a few plays there such as Suburbia and Through a Glass Onion. It was during one of these performances where she was noticed by veteran Funimation VA Kent Williams, who invited her to voice a character on a show known as, oh, Dragon Ball Z. She accepted this offer and voiced Kid Trunks on the show. Hey yo, if we don't hurry we could miss the whole thing, let's get a move on! While she'd do a few more voices at Funimation, it wasn't until she portrayed Toru Honda in Fruits Basket where she finally hit the big time. And speaking of which... It's 2008. I was 12 years old then, and I was going through the motions of high school. One of my siblings introduced me to Fruits Basket after I walked in on said sibling watching it one day. I wanted to watch it myself, and lo and behold, that ended up being my intro to Laura Bailey! It was how she performed Toru's voice which was what made me enjoy it thoroughly. How she had the perfect amount of innocence and cuteness that really brought to life Toru's angelic qualities. In addition, she also played up the more humorous moments really well with how adorably ditzy she could get. This is terrible, it's dangerous, we have to go back, we have to go back now, it's not safe here, come on. But where her voice got the most beautiful was the climax. Her and Kyo out in the rain, Toru practically confessing her feelings to him, Damn, Laura knocks it out of the park with how she handles Toru's utter pain and grief throughout this entire sequence. In short, it's an amazing performance that defined Laura Bailey as a recognisable name in the anime community. You know something, when the remake was announced, or rather, when the English dub cast of the remake was announced, I was so incredibly overjoyed when Funimation confirmed Laura would indeed be coming back as Toru. Giant fucking speakers blasted Amazing Grace in my head because of how amazing of an announcement it was. Anyway, as you can probably guess, the more roles I heard from her, the more I fell in love with her voice. Some of my personal highlights of characters voiced by Laura Bailey include Risei Kujikawa in Persona 4, Sabato Mihashigo in Bludgeoning Angel Dokoro-chan, Sarah Farron in the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, and Lucina in Fire Emblem Awakening. Normally, she tends to voice high-pitched, cutesy characters, and she pulls it off so well, it should be used as medicine for anyone's eardrums. This particular type of voice from her I find to be sweet, charming, beautiful, and soulful. And this talent, combined with the high volume of adorable characters she's voiced, is enough to earn her the moniker Queen of Cute from me. Does this mean she only does cutesy voices? No! There are just as many roles that she's done where she puts on a deep, husky voice because the characters she's voicing is supposed to be, say, alluring and serious, like Lust from Full Metal Alchemist. You killed me. I hate losing. But there are worse ways to die than at the hands of a man like you. Or a tough, no-nonsense action girl like Abby in The Last of Us Part 2. If the Fireflies are in Santa Barbara, I go the opposite fucking direction. and a few others where she unleashes all her hate, anger, and rage, like Kaine from Nier. Start making sense, you rotten book, or you're gonna be sorry. Maybe I'll rip your pages out one by one, or maybe I'll put you in the goddamn furnace. How can someone with such a big, smart brain get hypnotized like a little bitch, huh? And the boss in Saints Row the Third and Saints Row Four. The latter role she combines with a fun, anarchic, goofy tone that fits the chaotic madness of her character. I told them I wanted a gun in every room, and two in every hallway! She can even do accents as well, from the British Christie in Dead or Alive 5. <laughs> Drink it all up. You'll need your strength, little boy. To the South African Nadine Ross in Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, and Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Guess it's good I've got an archaeologist's daughter with me. It must have been fun growing up, eh? All of these roles proves that she has a great range within her vocal box and can utilise it to pull off some really impressive performances. In short, I'd say Laura Bailey's voice is like a delicious sweetie, comes in different flavours, provides unique experiences, and will leave you in a positively happy mood.
By the way, I really like the Lucinus Says videos by Matty Burrito. You should, like, totally watch him and, like, yeah, go do that and shit. Whew. Well, I think I've had my fill on all the voice actors I want to talk about today. So I guess the only thing left now is I've got nothing else to say. Goodbye. <laughs>